what should we do to prepare ourselves for manifesting God? We should prepare our instruments to manifest it, to manifest Him. And Today I will speak about uh, our outer being, our outer instruments. And first of all, I would like to say who I am. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a mother of the young girl who is two years old, and have a lot of inspiration to find integral approach to open to her, to my daughter integral possibility. Nothing can be taught, as we all know, but we can train our instrument to be flexible, to be integral, in order that this instrument will be able to be able uh, to manifest him in his diversity, in his unity. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to take fundamental uh, functions of consciousness, such as like seeing, hearing, speech and mind. And today I will speak about our mind, what it is. I would like to take scientific approach to this knowledge and to show uh, how can we develop our instrument, how can we consciously control our mind. All of us knows that, know that we have a lot of difficulties to stop our thinking. Monkey mind, as we all know. And there are some approaches that can help us. Uh, to develop our mind, to open it. So today I will speak about this instrument. As you all know, as known, our mind has two hemispheres, right, left and right one. They are connected to each other. Our left brain controls our right side of the body, this, this one. And our right brain control our left side of the body. Um, they are unique in their functions and ha uh, have their own capabilities. Um, left brain is more logical. It divine things, estimates them. And the right brain is intuitive more creative one. In our world, the left brain is dominated in us. We are very often are in a hurry, fast thinking, and something like this. We cannot stop our thoughts. The right brain is more relaxed. He is like in flow. Uh, here are some attributes of the mind. Don't pay too much attention to these words uh, like left brain attributes and right brain and attributes because it's not such cut and dried. Uh, our brain, our left brain and right brain, they are complementary to, to each other. You see here, uh, I can say both, for example, language that's Science suppose that language is more left brain instrument, but both brains are working in the language because left brain uh, it deals with uh, pronunciation and grammar, and right brain with intonation. So in the language we use both of them, but to be a harmonized uh, being, we need to balance the right brain and the left brain. 
Before six years old, um, in children dominates right brain. And after six years old, that brain is dominating in us. We have structures, mental formation, and something like this. And our education in modern society emphasize the education of left brain. We do not pay much attention to right to train in right brain. And I would like to show you another scene. How can we describe our left brain and right brain in words? You can see here like left brain analysis and right brain synthesis. Time and space, part and whole, open and hidden, intelligence and intuition, logic, emotion, argument, experience, thinking, sensing, activity, passivity, conscious, subconscious, language, silence, science, poetry, rational, irrational, law, art, objective, subjective, facts and numbers and analogies. So we see there are different approach of the left brain and right brain. And you see, when mother spoke about what is the true state of our consciousness, to be receptive. I think she always uh, said about the state of right brain, when you are in silence, when you have, when you are receptive. And we should, in our society, we should give a road to our right brain capacity. We need to balance our brain. How can we do this? There are some exercises that help us in every sphere, but a uh, common one is meditation, and common one is pranayama. Pranayama trains and balance both of our left brain and right brain. You know that when we are breathed in with our nose, uh, different volume came to our left and right nostrils. And if we have equal amount of air, it's equal amount of prana. And that is the state of uh, meditation. We can balance our brain with breathing exercises. Here I would like to invite Vladimir to my presentation because he can do some comments about integral paradigm here. Um, because when you see these words, which refers to right and left brain, you see uh, integral paradigm here. Um, I think this, um, what we see on this um, screen here, time and space are not mm, totally corresponding. You would see immediately that there is some question here, yes? Because they, what they mean by this time and space, most probably the linear way of thinking, sequence. They don't think about time as a, as a force. It would be rather opposite way. So it will be sequential time and time as a, in, a, in a more global way. So here you see that the terminology is not worked out totally. But there are many very interesting kind of suggestions. You immediately see this kind of rational, irrational, science poetry. Language silence also is not worked out totally. Um, so there are many things, so activity, passivity, receptivity rather. Um, part and whole is very good. Open, hidden also is very good. One is more apprehensive, the left one, and the 
the right one is more comprehensive. It's kind of interesting that it fits totally to this apprehension comprehension. my brain capabilities. Uh, corresponding to the five senses of the left brain, sight, hearing, touch, taste, taste and smell, the right brain also has its five senses. However, they are not the senses of the sight and hearing in the normal manner, but the ability to see, hear and sense things through waves translated into images. It's very interesting thing. It's not the outer instrument, but it's our right brain received the waves and translated it. Uh, another right brain capability is the ability to see images in the form of motion pictures. Photographic memory is here. It's a very interesting thing. We can train this capability in us, in everybody. When the left brain takes information very slowly and with repetition, the right brain doesn't need repetition at all. It takes information very quickly. We can train children, for example, to show them cards. One second, one card from another. Left brain uh, cannot receive something, uh, uh, cannot get this information. It's too fast for, for, the, the, for the left brain. What the right brain can, and it's very amazing, we can uh, train photographic memory in such a way. Uh, the ability to master foreign languages easily is the capability of the right brain too. As you know, um, children before six uh, years old can easily uh, take languages, a lot of them, because they are open. They are not thinking as we are, what is left, left brain, when it's repetition, when it's studying, but they just take it easy. And we can do it also when we open our right brain capabilities. But for elders it's much uh, difficult, more difficult than for youngest one. The ability to receive inspiration and use it towards unique creativity. Uh, I can say a lot of what, uh, words about arts, artists. Usually they uh, have domination of right brain. And a lot of literature about drawing. Everybody, all of us, can be painters, very good painters. But we need to open our right brain capabilities here. Um, for example, we can exercise our right brain in painting, in drawing, like this. You take a picture and turn it upside down. Our uh, left brain cannot understand this picture. No name, something, some figure. So. Uh, our left brain doesn't want to work on it, but our right brain saw a form, lines, and it pays a lot of attention to these lines, and we can draw a portrait or a picture, a very difficult one, but we can do it. I saw amazing examples uh, with my friends, they just went to the seminars of right brain drawing, Amazing results, amazing portrait, portraits, very difficult works, but they can do it only through two days, they can do it. So, very amazing capability for all of us. And you can say a few words about painting and our vision of colors. Uh, from our childhood, we had that the sky is blue and the grass is green. We have some mental formation in our head, what are the colors of our nature. But we 
are not truly to develop our seeing, true seeing, because we, when we are look very attentively, we see that the color is changing, and it depends on the light, on the sunlight, and depends on the another colors that is near. It's a lot of things, and we need to open our mind to really see the colors as the painters do. Uh, the painters has another vision, another capability of seeing things, because they exercise this possibility. But all of us can do it. It's not so difficult. We need to open our mind to be less left brain, but more right brain capability we need to have. So the next is uh, the ability to receive information on the intuitive level and to use that information accordingly. Um, a right brain is a bridge to a higher consciousness for us. Because left brain deals with the outer things, which is our surroundings, but the, light, uh, but the right brain is like a bridge to deep reality, to hidden reality. And we can uh, build this bridge with it. So, uh, that is all about what I, I want to you know, tell you about some ideas, some direction where we can apply our efforts, where, where can we exercise ourselves. And this is not so difficult. This is here in our head, we can do it. And if you want to develop uh, these capabilities, uh, possibilities, uh, we need to take maybe some domain painting or music, for example, and try to find exercises there where can we switch, where can we balance our brain and can, can we switch more than to the right brain. I have some examples what you can do in drawing or painting, but it can be everywhere, this example. And uh, the next information I would, uh, today I, I would like to talk about is about brain waves. It's another approach to our mental being and to our mental possibility. So, brain waves are produced by synchronized electrical pulses from masses of neurons communicated with each other. So, we have neurons in our head and they make some pulses. They make waves. Uh, uh, we have some impulses from above or from inside of us, of our surroundings. All this influence on our, uh, on our brain and our neurons, they are answer to these impulses from outside. And I want to here is a picture what of uh, what our brains are, what our brain waves are. It's. I would like to uh, describe all of these waves because it's very interesting, and I will begin with infralow brain, infralow waves. Waves has their own amplitude and frequency. Frequency is the cycle per second of our waves. So in prolong our waves less than half hertz. In prolong brain waves are thought to be the basic cortical rhythm that underline our high high brain functions. And there are little is known about infralow brain waves. Their slow nature makes it difficult to detect and accurately measure, so few studies have been done. They appear to take a major role in brain timing and network function. Another one, 
is the delta waves of two or three hertz. Uh, delta brain waves are slow, loud brain waves. Low frequency and deep penetrating, like a drum beat. They're generated in the deepest meditation and dreamless sleep. It's a state of trance. When we are in trance, we have delta waves more than other one. Delta waves suspend external awareness. Healing and regeneration are stimulated in this state, and that is why deep restorative sleep is so essential to the healing process of to our body. Theta waves up to 8 Hz. Theta brain waves occur most often in sleep, but are also dominate in a deep meditation. It acts as it acts as our gateway to learning and memory. In theta, our senses are withdrawn from the external world and focused on signals originated from within. It's very interesting for those who are practicing yoga. Because it's our state of our mind when we are within ourselves. It is that twilight state which we normally only experience fleetingly as we wake or drift off to sleep. Usually, uh, we don't remember this state. We need in other waves, alpha waves, to make our inner experience, our dream, out. To remember this. But I will speak later about this thing. In theater, we are in dream, while it imagery, intuition, and information beyond our normal conscious awareness. It's their creative state of our mind. But we have a lot of super possibility here. They are hidden in these waves. Alpha waves. Alpha brain waves are dominant during quietly flowing thoughts. It's like a flow. When we feel like we are in a flow, this is the state of alpha waves. And in some meditative states, Alpha is the power of now, being here in the present. Alpha is the resting state for the brain. We don't spend too much energy when we have such waves in dominant. Alpha waves aid overall mental coordination, calmness, alertness, mind, body integration and learning. The increases of alpha brain waves precede peak performance. A few words about peak performance. Uh, when sportsmen exercise and do some uh, work, they have peak performance when the alpha brain waves increase, increase. They have a burst of alpha waves and they can do amazing things. New records, uh, new possibilities. This is our alpha waves. Uh, and our usual waves, better waves, they are dominating in us. Better waves dominate our normal waking state of consciousness. This is our monkey mind. <laughs> when attention is directly towards cognitive thoughts and outside world. Better is a fast activity, present when we are alert, attentive, engaging, problem solving, judgment, decision making, and Engage in focused mental activity. So there are some degrees of these better waves. Uh, we can see them here. There's better one, better two, better three, and I should say that when we are, when we have better one at up for 15 hertz, it's it's very comfortable thinking very slowly and we can do a lot of things in a very effective way. But when the better, in, better wave increase, in, uh, better waves increase in us, we are very excitement, have excitement in us and spend a lot of energies. So 
uh, up to 38 hertz, we cannot think at all. We are very excited. It's like a panic in us. Uh, and this is our gamma, gamma, gamma waves. It's a ways of enlightenment, spiritual emergence. It's very mystery, mystery waves, because uh, gamma is also above the frequency of neuronal firing, so how it is generated remains a mystery. And this is the state of universal law of all trees and higher virtues. return to this kind of phase, delta and theta, uh, when we are, when these ways are here, uh, is to say we are, we feel unity with the world, not division at all. This is a very interesting thing. In our brain, uh, we have all the ways. Uh, but they are in, um, some of them are dominates, some are very low. So we need to balance our brain, to balance our waves. And I should give you some very interesting example with this. It's a shim of the brain activity, and the ho horizontal line is amplitude, and the vertical line is frequency. And you see this. Uh, space for delta, theta, alpha, and beta waves, left brain and right brain. And there are some uh, pictures I want to show you. What is our st state of active intelligence? Very effective one. You see there are a lot of alpha waves here. Alpha waves connect delta waves and theta waves experience with the a better one. So we can remember our dreams, we can remember our inner experience when we have alpha waves. Uh, we need to uh, meditate, to relax more and to train, consciously train to have alpha waves. We can do it. We can do some efforts to increase alpha waves in us. It's not so difficult as we can see. And this is another picture of meditation state without faults, you see that there is no uh, better ways at all. And another one is very interesting, consciousness out of the body, nothing is here. So this is a question, what is our brain is? We are alive, but our consciousness is somewhere else. So what is the brain? How it connected with our consciousness? And this is a very interesting thing for integral paradigm. And uh, another picture is a developed state of intelligence. Someone says that it's a transcend transcendental state of our mind. I don't know. I want to practice this. And uh, my uh, next step, I want to buy some device. You just put it on your head and you can register your brain waves. When you do some exercise, when you speak, when you draw, when you sing, you can see what happens with your brain. And then you can feel the, uh, um, feel what you are in this state. So you can you have an example uh, and you can regulate mind activity. So I want to give you only an idea, not very deep, like a sketch that all possibilities are here and we can develop our brain functioning. So, that's all. Thank you, Natalia. It was very beautiful. And one, uh, only one small comment before I invite uh, Amanda to come is that uh, if you analyze these very deep waves uh, from 3 hertz and onwards to the highest, you can clearly see the increase of frequency which corresponds with Gibsonian structures of consciousness. It's very interesting that 
this first magic structure is deep in us, the oneness of nature and ourselves. Then there is a difference which is coming with alpha waves. Then there is this beta waves which are already in the awakened state of the mental structure of consciousness, very busy monkey mind operating with things in an analytical way, in the, um, uh, in the apprehensive way. And then there is this high frequency which is far beyond, and that is our integral state, where all these frequencies can be accommodated. Because in high frequency, as we know, all the frequencies can be present. And this is an interesting idea. It matches with there's an interesting thought with the high frequencies because we start hearing around 20 hertz, so that means those high brain frequencies, in one way we should be able to hear from each other because it's in the hearing range. Maybe that is the music of the spheres, what we have to hear. It's the flute. Yeah, it is compared to the flute frequency. Thank you very much. So I invite to come up really.